it's time to talk about fluid energy and Bernoulli's equation. And so to do that, I thought, what better place than the Jack Daniel Distillery in Greensboro, Kentucky? It's got a great places to. Bob, this is the distillery. Get back to work. She's right. It's not a distillery. We're actually here at the Washington Enormous Fusion Facility, built into the side of a hill to power the entire state into the end of the 21st century and beyond. Incredibly state-of-the-art thing. With, I mean, scientists from all over the world are here to do it. And I'm here too. Uh, we thought we'd uh, let you look at this before it becomes public in the year 2010. This, of course, is the... Um, the, the drinking water facility. Everything else was kind of taken, so I'm just doing the drinking water facility right now. But it gives you a nice idea of how fluid energy works. Um, what you do with fluid energy is you're trading off between between kinetic energy density, water's got to move, right? Um, pressure. I can pressurize the fluid. It can store energy, just like if you coil a spring of storing energy. Pressurized fluid has energy. What else? I can raise it up. Notice some of these pipes go up and down. As you go up, you're gaining gravitational potential energy. This is the same thing as what we did with mechanical energy, right? I've got, I've got kinetic energy. I've got water flowing. I've got gravitational potential energy. The water goes up. It gains energy. It comes down. It loses that energy. I've got, um, I've got pressure energy. When I store it, squeeze it like a ball. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a gas bottle go, the 3,000 PSI argon bottle. If you break off that top, it'll go through a wall. So those are the three things, gravitational potential energy density, because we're talking about energy per volume with Bernoulli's equation, kinetic energy density, and pressure. So let's go find a blackboard and try some problems. Yeah. Norma's fusion facility has got its own football team. It's pretty crazy. We battled the uh, linear accelerator last week uh, for the championship. We're like <laughs> 24 scientists down. It's pretty unsafe around here. We should get going. So let's talk about fluid energy. Let's see. Um, one example uh, in laboratory experiments, and you'll see this around in water supply systems, is the fluid accumulator. And what that is is uh, Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's sealed, but it's a reservoir, and you can store not water really, but energy in it. If I've got energy coming in like this, I'll call it energy density. So the energy density is energy per volume, and so instead of one, instead of one half mass times velocity squared, I'll have one half mass density times the velocity squared. So if, uh, as the flow comes in here, I might have like a surge of kinetic energy density. And what happens, it'll come in here and it'll start to fill up this reservoir, the fluid accumulator. And what does that, it converts this kinetic energy density, I should say kinetic energy per volume, it converts it into potential energy density, which is instead of mass times gravity to height, times height, it'd be density times gravity times height. It'll raise the level of the water in here, storing the energy. It's the fluid analog of like a shock absorber on a car. Also, if I have this top sealed, as this rises, it'll pressurize this area, so it'll store it also as pressure. And when the flow comes back out, it's the same amount of energy. It'll come back into this kinetic energy density, but it'll be spread out over a longer period of time. Just like when you're uh, your shock absorbers, how they, if you hit a bump, they spread that bump out over a longer period of time. So the fluid accumulator can use all three of these. So let's put them together into something that's called Bernoulli's equation. Put together, I think, by Daniel Bernoulli. Bernoulli. He was Swiss. Let's see. So it takes into account all the different easy ways you can store energy in a fluid. So it's Bernoulli. Bernoulli's equation. And it says that you can take pressure, energy, and you can store energy as in gravity. So I'll say 
This is all energy density, so it's mass per volume. So I've got gravitational potential energy density, pressure, and kinetic energy density. What Bernoulli said is, if you make some assumptions, these are all constant. I can move the, I can move the energy around to different uh, like safe deposit boxes, but I still have the same total energy. And what he assumed was assumptions. He assumed, well, I can't move the energy anywhere else. So I've got to assume no friction. That's also, for fluids, that's no viscosity. It causes heating and loss of energy to the heat. Um, no turbulence. If I start making the energy go in all kinds of different directions, I've wasted it. So I want to, I'm going to assume just laminar flow for this. Finally, I'm going to assume that the density terms don't change. I'm going to assume incompressible flow, where the density won't change. It makes it easier to solve. Now, this doesn't work very well for air, but it's great for water. Because water doesn't compress much at all in the fluid state. So no friction, which is no viscosity, no turbulence, laminar flow, and incompressible flow. The density stays constant. So let's try, well, let's see, first, well, let's try this. <laughs> 